Why is the world short of computer chips? Automakers are having to close factories in Asia, Europe, and the United States. Even giants like Samsung are warning about a severe shortage. Here's what you need to know. Well, this really all began at the start of the coronavirus pandemic. The technology industry and automakers were heading into the pandemic and they anticipated that demand was gonna fall pretty sharply. So many of them, particularly in the automotive industry, began cutting their forecasts for the year ahead. That led them to close down some orders that they had planned, scale back their own production, and tell their suppliers also that they didn't need as many parts as they had originally anticipated. The thing was, there was actually a tremendous boom in demand for many of these products during the pandemic. As people were stuck at home, working at home, they needed more computers, they needed more screens, they wanted better smartphones, and they began to buy a lot of this technology. Automakers also were in for something of a surprise. People decided that they wanted to drive more, they wanted to be on their own so they were a bit more protected, and they saw an increase in demand. The trouble was, after they had told suppliers that they didn't need as many parts, they had to go to the back of the line to get more chips. Why can't we make more chips? Well, the tricky part about the semiconductor industry is that it takes a very long time to scale up production. A chip fabrication facility can take years to build and tens of billions of dollars to invest, and then you have to refine the manufacturing system so that you get a high yield of chips. That's very challenging to do, and it takes chip makers a long time. So as they see this boom now in demand, they won't be able to bring more capacity online for quite a while. The other issue is that they don't want to scale up now for the demand that they're seeing now in case that demand is temporary. And then in the future, they get their facilities online a year or two years or three years down the line, and this demand has disappeared. Who are the biggest players in this space? There are a number of big chip makers that contribute different kinds of components. Intel, of course, makes many microprocessors that go into laptops and PCs. Uh, Samsung makes memory chips that go into smartphones and a number of different things. One of the key areas right now where we're seeing shortages is in the foundry business. These are big uh, manufacturers that make chips for other players. So Taiwan Semiconductor in Taiwan is the biggest there and Samsung is the second biggest. They will take chips that are designed by say Qualcomm or Apple or Nvidia and then they manufacture those chips. Right now it's hard to get extra capacity at the high end of the market so capacity at TSMC and Samsung in particular is in very short supply and they're trying to ramp up production to meet this surge in demand. There's also shortages appearing now because of this huge surge in demand at different areas of the supply chain. For example, you have something called the display driver, which is not a high-end chip. It's a very uh, inexpensive piece. It costs about a dollar that helps illuminate uh, an LCD display. But because there's in this big demand, it's hard to get enough display drivers, and the companies that make those kinds of display drivers haven't been able to ramp up their capacity given how suddenly this increase in demand has come up. So why does all this matter? Well, one of the big questions that has come up because of these semiconductor shortages is whether countries need to have domestic supply of chips to be able to protect their own economies. You're seeing this question being asked in the United States, in Europe, and also in China in particular. The Biden administration has begun to examine policies where they would bring more chip manufacturing back to the United States. China is very determined to build its own domestic chip industry. The challenge for these companies is that it takes years of planning to build this kind of capacity, even if you have the right technology, and they're not gonna be able to address the current shortages uh, anytime soon. The big question is how long these shortages are gonna last. And it will be different periods of time for different parts of the supply chain, but we are hearing from uh, companies and from executives that they anticipate this is gonna last for several quarters. It may spill into next year. We've had a couple of disruptions just recently that have aggravated the situation. There was a fire at a Japanese company called Renaissance that makes uh, chips, particularly for the automotive industry. There was also this winter storm in Texas that knocked out a lot of capacity for chip makers there, including uh, Samsung. I'm Peter Elstrom for Bloomberg News in Tokyo.